Steve Poland here and in last week's breeding update video I talked about I had a few projects going on down here in the fish room that were either recently completed or about to be completed so I wanted to take some time this week to go through some of those and uh, the very first project uh, really the most exciting thing for me is uh, I've added a couple of new tanks down here now if you caught my New Year's resolution video it was not to buy any more tanks but I bought these before that I bought these at the end of last year, so uh, my resolution for no new tanks is still intact. Obviously, still not doing a great job with that, though. But really, uh, these are the last two I plan to buy, at least for a while, although that's always the case, haha. -ha. Um, so, this is my double 55 rack here, and on top I've added a 33 long. I had a 20 long up there for a little while. Um, it just wasn't the best use of that space, and I never drilled it, so... This is a 33, which is actually the same exact footprint as a 55, it's just shorter. So it's really the best use of that space. I drilled it um, so I can get it into the drip system. It's cycling right now, um, so that's going to be awesome. And then up here, I've just added another 40 breeder to this rack from Lowe's. So now I have three 40 breeders there. Again, I drilled it. It is cycling and going to be ready to go soon. So going to be nice. I'm just under a thousand gallons in here in the main fish room now. Um, so let me just, if you want to see, I can do like a little sweep of the room. So I've got the quad 40 breeder rack with the 610s on top. Then I've got the 340s here. And then the 255s and the 33. So all that's looking good. I'm going to turn on this overhead light again though real quick. So I'm going to show you some other stuff. So another thing that uh, I've been working on is trying to minimize the evaporation down here. Um, on all of my tanks, you know, they have glass tops. I've used the back plastic strips and tried to cut those out, you know, to be really snug with anything I've got back there. So like on a couple tanks, I've got these aqua clear filters. I've got it cut out so that there's no evaporation or as little as possible anyway coming from around there. Uh, my drip system tubing comes in. I've got a little cutout for that with the clamp. My heaters, the cord for my heaters uh, goes through that same little opening, so it's pretty snug back there. I've done that with all of my tanks. Um, I even got, Doctors uh, Foster and Smith sells these. You can buy them in like six foot lengths, just the back strip by itself. So I bought a couple of those. They shipped in a nice long cardboard too, which my kids are having fun playing with, but um, I've taken those strips and I cut on the back of the tens. You saw that project. Uh, I did a video about a project to do glass tops for these tens, sliding tops, which are great, uh, but there was a little gap at the back for my drip system to come in, so I did add bla uh, plastic strips to the back of those, kind of the same as what I just showed you. Same concept, but um, before there was just like an opening, the width of each tank, which, you know, that adds up. And then one other thing I did, you know, I've got these breeder boxes, which I love. Um, on this 40 breeder, I've got three of them. Down here, I've got one up and running. I'm going to add two more, so it's going to be the same as this tank. Um, I've got them spaced out with like a gap here for me to put a hose on the tank or whatever I need to put on here. But as you can see down here, there's like, you know, the lid stays pretty, like not even close to closed which always annoyed me. So as you can see on this one, it's much closer. Um, if I get down here, much smaller gap. It's not perfect, but it's better. I just took plastic strip and put it on there on the front of this, uh, this part of the top, and now it just kind of slides, which is fine. And then I just cut out little openings for the breeder boxes. It's not perfect, but it helps. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. I just haven't done it yet. Another thing I've added down here is some shelving. Just tried to maximize the space. I had some shelves here, but they weren't great. So I'm storing stuff up in the I-beam. <laughs> then I've got some just random shelves I threw in here for stuff. Paper towel holder. My food's here. Medications here. Some boxes. Just random stuff may not be a huge deal but it's really nice I've got you know a little shelf up here to hold other breeder nets put some stuff up in the beam up there I'm just trying to like you know like I said not a lot of space down here 
because this room is it's fish room there's the crawl space up there and then it's also where I have my weights and stuff this is really the only place in the house that I can keep them behind this door away from the kids I don't want the kids dropping weights on themselves or anything so um, and then of course my furnace and water heater that my enormous water heater um, but trying to maximize this space and so another thing I've done I hung those plates up on the wall instead of the plate tree that I had and then back here you can't really see this corner too well back here there's an empty corner and in here I'm gonna be probably putting a utility sink so that's a project that's gonna be happening and then another thing as you can see this is my drain line that runs around the room and I really I wish I had that to do over again, and I'm about to do it over again. I just did three quarters, which is way too small. You know, my overflows in these tanks, I've got them plumbed. There's a bulkhead, and there's this kind of standpipe that I can twist down to drain the tanks, but it's three quarters, and then the drain line is three quarters. It's just super slow, and the top ones tend to overflow out the bottom like into the bottom tanks, which is just a disaster. So I really don't use them that much. The drip system flows through them, but that's about it. I'm gonna put in a two inch drain line around the room instead. Um, that's a project coming up. I got some fittings sitting there for that. Um, it's gonna be a, a major project because that floor drain is kind of underneath uh, the back of this 55 down here. So I'm gonna have to drain uh, all three of these tanks and slide the rack out, which is fine. I mean, it's not, the end of the world. I'll just put the fish in buckets or whatever for a little bit and then do it and put them back. But that's why I haven't done it yet. It's, it's going to be a big project. Um, yeah. Oh, one other cool thing I did was this, and really this pump is kind of my stopgap for those drains that I can't use or those overflows that, that I don't use. Um, and I've shown this before in my video about how I maintain my fish room. This is like a 1300 gallon per hour pump from Harbor Freight and it works real well but I was annoyed with the hose that I had attached to it getting kinked up all the time so I just got this little garden hose reel cart um, that's been good and it stopped it from kinking up of course this side part is kinked up right now but um, you can see this fixture is on the end of it permanently I just put that down in the floor drain um, and use this pump to pump out all the tanks but it's a pain because I gotta move it between the tanks all the time um, as I'm doing it. So having those bigger drain lines will be nice. Um, I can keep this set up if I want and I'll just, instead of using that fitting on the end, I'll just plumb it into that drain line so I can still use it if I want to. Um, I'll probably use a quick disconnect because I still do use this pump upstairs to do water changes. It makes it a lot quicker. Um, oh, and speaking of humidity, I got a humidity control. I don't know if I showed this when I was filming over here a second ago, but got a nice little uh, humidity monitor. Just nice to be able to see how I'm doing with that. If you guys don't have one of these, if you have a fish room, multiple tanks, I recommend getting one just to keep an eye on things. Shows you how you're doing humidity wise, so that's nice. Uh, but other than that, really just trying to keep everything maintained, cleaned. You know, it's uh, a lot of tanks, takes a lot of time, but I'm trying to automate it as best I can. You know, my water changing system, I would love it if it was automated and someday maybe it will be. Really the first step to that is getting those drains in place can't really do auto water changes if you don't have sufficient way to drain the tanks when that water gets pumped in so you know baby steps uh, just little at a time getting things better down here um, always interested in feedback things that uh, you know any ideas you guys have things you've done in your rooms um, hopefully maybe a couple of these things or, or things that I talk about inspire you to do stuff in your fish rooms so thanks everybody appreciate you watching uh, you know all the same things hit like hit subscribe comment um, Thanks, and as always, have a good one.